I will follow my heart wherever it may lead me. Today on Coffee with Conrad. Winning. You know, one of the most popular things that that there is out there to say is, let's follow our heart. Let's follow our dreams wherever they may take us. Don't give up, kids. We can follow our dreams. You know, on this, from a Christian perspective, we can choose to, to trust the Bible in all of its wisdom, which comes from the creator of the heavens and the earth. Or we can learn the hard way. And the hard way seems to be human nature. <laughs> Let's face it. Um, if we choose to learn from the Bible, we can trust that it's right. And um, we'll never experience the shortcoming that it says is going to happen. I mean, we with experience, we see this. What, when we go, you know what? I think I'm going to start just trusting what the Word of God says. It's kind of like our parents because, we, you know, God's our Father, right? Our Father who art in heaven. And our parents, they tell us not to play in the streets. You know, if they love us, they'll tell us not to play in the streets. And we just have to trust that what they're saying is for our own benefit. But we all have peer groups, you know, people of our peers, you know, friends. And they're friends in the world, a lot of them. And we're probably going to address some of that. And we have this ingrained in our members, which, which Paul talks about, this desire to covet or be jealous. We want the things that they have. We want to do the things that they're doing. We want the prestige that they have. We want their haircut. We want their shoes. We want their clothes uh, or clothes like theirs or you know, car, you, later you get into cars, homes, business position, any type of prestige. The list just continues on. And, you know, I've been meditating on this. This is because we, we have these desires. When we're born, we're born like wicked. The heart's, the heart's wicked. I'm going to get to some scripture right now. You know, and I know I talk about Jeremiah a lot. And I talk about the heart because America has a heart problem. We've got, we've got heart problems, you know. And speaking of that, if you just like look at the physical, I mean, just just think of think of it as in the physical. Look at the junk that we put in our body that causes our veins, you know, the blood, to clog up, and we die. Just look at the stuff. We know the Bible says, hey, there's some, here's the, the fruit of the tree. That's good stuff. It doesn't say, you know, fried foods. It doesn't say processed food. It doesn't even call that food, to be quite honest. He says, you should see how the Lord defines food. If you say, well, would the Lord, is, can we define this as food? You know, and, and we think, well, you know, we're putting junk in our, our spiritual heart, too. But here's the condition of man in Jeremiah 17, 9. And I, I, I could go on about this for a long time because I've learned. You know, I've been there. But the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now, park this in, the, park this in your spirit for later and I, cuz I talk about this too all the time. I the Lord search the heart, I try the reins to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Um there's you know God destroyed the earth because of um you know the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. I think that's Genesis chapter 6. Jesus talks in the New Testament about for out of the heart 
proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with washing hands doesn't defile a man. So my point is, um, we've got a heart problem. Our sin problem, notice how the, it all starts in the, in the heart, you know. Jesus talks about you can cut off your hand or cut, cut out your eye. But what happens is when we see something, when we lust after a thing of the world with our eyeball, then our mind thinks on it and it drops down into our heart. Then here, here comes this murderous thought or this covetous thought or whatever. And then we sin with our hand. We actually do it. But we need to deal with where these things are conceived. Now, let's fast forward to the walk of the godly man. In uh, how does it work? What, what, what's our goal here? I'm trying to give you a kingdom key. Psalm 24, 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Now, this kind of shows us that we have some work to do. Amen? So we go from being desperately wicked to, wait a minute, there's an ascension here. I talked recently about the Valley of Decision. You know, we're in that carnal estimation. We're, we're like trying to uh, think things through. Is Jesus the Lord and all that stuff? And then, we're, well, I don't see any evidence. You're, you're reasoning. You're dealing with empiricism, the things that you can see, taste, touch, hear, touch, hear and feel. However, God's a spirit, and it's really kind of hard to prove a spirit. You can't weigh a spirit, you know. So you're like, how am I? You know, I've had this experience, but it was a spiritual experience. And, you know, then we also go to Matthew 5, 8. Okay, but keep in mind, there, there's a thing here where we're wicked, our hearts are wicked. And then we go to, the, uh, to the, this here where we ascend on the Mount of the Lord. We have pure hearts. And then Jesus says in the, in the Beatitudes, you know, these are the attitudes, the way to be. You know, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So we can kind of see here that we don't start out pure in heart, right? We kind of start out wicked, you know? So there's, a, there's an A and then there's a Z. There's an ascension, right? So some of you may have noticed that these are both pre-cross scriptures. Yes, I know. The Beatitudes is pre-cross. A lot of you understand that the New Testament comes in with the death of the testator. Jesus was not living in the New Testament during his lifetime or he would not have fulfilled the law. He was living in the Old Testament. He had to fulfill it. So let's go to a post-cross scripture, James, the Lord's brother, in James 4. James 4 is a really good one to meditate on because, you know, it's just an awesome, awesome bunch of verses that we can just go, you know what, I'm, I'm learning something from this. This is something like we need to, we need to memorize James 4. And I'm going to talk about it here. I'm just going to read it straight through so you know I'm not Bible chopping, okay? Because this kind of shows us the ascension from going from wicked to clean heart, okay? Now, keep in mind, again, this is post-cross, and James is writing to believers, okay? Think Corinthians, maybe. You know, think, oh, yeah, those guys, <laughs> or something, you know, kind of, you might want to think of that. James 4, one from whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even from the lust that war in your members? I'm going to read to verse 10 without interrupting. Ye lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war, you have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think the scripture saith in vain that the spirit in us lusts to envy? But he giveth more grace, whoso, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace in the humbles. Here we go. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 
Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and let your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Now, I read all that because I wanted you to see that there is kind of an ascension here. This kingdom key has an ascension. Uh, in the beginning of the statement here, James is talking about that we have this natural desire warring in our members. We lust, we covet, um, and our old ways of doing things isn't working for us. These, uh, these things that we were doing in our own carnal estimation and following our heart and all that stuff, it's really not working out for us. It's become, even in the secular world, dude, even in, even in the business world or whatever, it's a severe waste of time. Um, we get obsessed with, like, let's say, being the best guitar player. And, you know, that happens because you, see, you saw another guitar. You wouldn't know even to be a guitar player if you were never exposed to being a guitars. Okay. Um, so, in this, this time of being obsessed with playing guitar, um, let's say I wanted to be the best guitar player on the planet, so I would practice four hours a day, scales, arpeggios, and all that stuff. But really, the underlying fundamental precept there was to be famous, right? So that one person, being famous by its very definition means that you're one of a very few, very large number, okay? Not everybody can be famous. <laughs> so, so, and when they get up there and say, look, follow your heart, follow your dreams, and all that stuff, they, they forget to tell you that the, being up on stage and receiving worship from people from your virtuoso guitar playing is really fulfilling the lusts of the devil. We need to ask where our lusts are coming from. So, you know, I used to lust to be a really good guitar player. Satan's permeated the music industry. We know this. You know, the five eye wheels in Isaiah 14, he's using music to do that. You know, he's above the people, receiving worship. Heck, in churches now, between the songs, there's applause. It's like entertainment. <laughs> but anyway, God has taken my musical ability that I had probably this wrong desire that, you know, it, it was not a pure heart-driven motivation, but this heart desire drove me to practice slave, and I had this vision of being in front of people and playing, you know, receiving worship, basically, applause. So now God uses that for good, Genesis fifty twenty. We know what the devil meant for evil. God is... Uh, meant for good or how about how about trying to be valedictorian I know a lot of kids out there there can only be one valedictorian per school so are we seeking the approval of man or of God because being a valedictorian you're not studying the Bible and I, I'm not saying that it's bad you know do the do whatever you do in word or indeed do in the name of the Lord but to have this, this heart desire, is it's tugging you. Is this a desire that's of God? And the biggest one, and I people, I know I'm probably going to ruffle some feathers here, but we need to, I'm here to help. This is a kingdom key, and this is the one that I see it's huge, is this desire to have a mate. Dude. This desire is one of the biggest heart tuggers I've ever seen. And it causes people to not obey God in a big way. It causes us to sin just because we want a mate. There's this inner desire thing. Oh, we've got to have somebody. You've got the Proverbs 31 ministry. You know, I mean, it's just like, oh, God's going to bring me a person. And basically, God's your genie in the bottle with that type of thing. But what does God want for us? And I'm going to tell you something else. The funny thing is that whenever we get this object of our heart, heartfelt desire, there's a void very quickly short after that. It does not fill the void. Can, is, is the prophet uh, uh, Solomon says, you know, do the eyes ever get full of seeing? No, it just it doesn't. It, it doesn't fulfill you. And this thing, it'll just chase, it'll just chase something else. You know, I like gadgets. 
<laughs> and I realize there's a heart problem, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm like going, ooh, I just love gadgets. But now, the way I look at it now, and I'm not perfect, but um, I use them for the ministry. You know, everything I've got, basically, is used for ministry. My laptop, my computer, my cameras, my microphones. I'm about God, right? And that is fulfilling. Telling people about God. We're praying and seeking the Lord for kingdom keys. And using technology, right? But if I took God out of that and I just had the technology, well, then I'd want another piece of equipment. You know, I'd want the latest iPhone. I would want the latest thing. And I still do. But now I use them for God, and I, I, I submit to the Lord. And I'm like, look, Lord, let your will be done. Now, another thing I want to point out to you is in our spirit, heart, mind, makeup of ourselves. Notice that God says that he tries the reins of our heart. Okay? What's pulling our heart around? And I want to I say something. If our heart is leading us, then we might as well follow a crying five-year-old at the candy aisle at the checkout line. You're going to be following the... You're following a crying crybaby five-year-old. So we need to rule over our hearts. Um, if we rule over our hearts, that's, that's the goal. Then we can ascend. We can't let the hearts lead us around. Now notice that James goes on to say that part of the heart problem is friendship with the world. That is a big, big problem. He calls us adulterers and adulteresses. In James 4.4, 4, you adulterers and adulteresses know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. So you're an enemy with God. We want the things of the world that God doesn't want us to have. <laughs> We're an enemy of God. We put worldly desires before God's. And that makes us an enemy of God. Amen? Um, James then offers the kingdom key here. Let's see. He says down here, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Now, how do we submit yourself to God? Now, first off, in the beginning was the word. Whoa, should be a clue. The word was God. The word was with God. How about submitting yourself to the Word of God? In other words, saying, this is the hill I'm going to die on. This, this is it. I'm going to submit myself to what this Bible says. And in Romans 12, too, <clears throat> this is a good, good clue, clue here, too. He's talking like James. Be not conformed to this world. The world is conforming us all the time. Okay? And you're, if your friendship with the world, you're going to be conformed by the world. But we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How, how do we renew our mind? By submitting to God and submitting to the, world, word, uh, to the word of God. That you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How are you going to know the will of God if you don't read his word? Right? So submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. Now that sounds like that going up the hill of the Most High. Right? In Psalm 24, 3 I believe. Let's see. Where is it? Psalm 24, 3. Who shall ascend in the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Notice the parallel here. <clears throat> who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. So back to James 4. Here we go. Clean hands your heart but then he says double-minded this double-minded thing is even um, a clue okay draw an eye to God he will draw an eye to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded now there's this thinking that goes on in our heart this double-minded a double-minded man is un unstable in all of his ways he's being tossed to and fro with the seas of doctrine, the winds of doctrine, but also the winds of the world and the winds of God's will. So the idea is to not be double-minded. In other words, don't let the word of God say one thing and your heart say something else. What our goal is to prove the acceptable will of God, we need to know what it is, so much so that it dominates our thinking. And for it to dominate our thinking, 
Reading the Bible needs to be a very large part of our daily activity, like food. Like I was mentioning food a while ago. I was talking about eating bad foods. Look at what eating bad foods, or foods that aren't even defined as the word food in the Bible, look at what it does to our bodies. Yeah, guilty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. We crave the stuff that kills us. You know, I don't really crave an apple all the time, but man, you give me some peanut butter and crackers or some mayonnaise, you know, that stuff that kills you. Yeah. So anyway, we want our mind and our heart to be aligned up. It says in Psalm 1914, um, I'm going to give you this one, because this, this is a good scripture too um, that will help you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, when you and I are, we're running around the house and we're murmuring or whatever, we're kind of unconscious. We're not really, we're just, what we're doing is we're speaking forth our desires. And desires from the Latin, de zire, of the Father, right? Uh, Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself also in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. So once we, we plug into God, he's going to start giving us our desires. And our heart will cause us to murmur. You know, it's, uh, Jesus says, out of the mar mouth comes all these things. It's where it starts is in the heart, and it causes us to murmur. So what we want is our heart, when we're unconscious, walking around, doing the laundry or whatever, and we're murmuring, we want that self-talk to line up with, the, with our mind, okay, to follow our mind, and we want our mind to follow the will of God. We want to, spirit, soul, and body, submit to the will of God of God. And that's our reasonable sacrifice. We want to be able to cast down those vain imaginations that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Why do we know that? Because we know the will of God because we read the Bible. If we read the Bible, we can cast down those vain imaginations that come out of nowhere, that come out of our heart, that Satan planted somewhere. Okay, when Satan, when Satan comes in and sows a seed of doubt and unbelief, you can cast it down because you know it's exalting itself against the word of God. Squash! Amen? So, anyway, I want to encourage you to not get your doctrine from the television. Um, don't get your doctrine from even me. You know, you can, you can use all of us to go, yeah, that bears witness. But I believe most of our doctrine should come from reading the Bible. Because, and the reason I say that is I have read many books about certain types of theologies and certain types of doctrines only to find they were grossly in error or misled or a little bit in error, just enough to mess you up. So you need to actually get the entire Bible in you. You've got version, you've got the MP3 Bibles, you've got all these audio Bibles that are free, right? Or text online Bibles. Just do that. I want to thank you guys for being a part of Conrad Rocks. I want you to think about are you a friend of the world or a friend of God? Amen. And let's go over my website real quick. Yeah, this is my commercial. Yeah, I got to have a commercial. So it's people like you that support ConradRocks.net. My mission is to get people to know God personally about the Spirit of God. I know I get attacked for doing that, but God's a spirit, and you can have a relationship with Him. If you read the text of the Bible, it says we're supposed to. My sheep know my voice. So anyway, Conrad Rocks, you can share Conrad Rocks over here, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, whatever. You have all these stumble upon, whatever. Anything that you like, please share that. You've got the support page about me, Conrad's Conrad's. Subscribe to the Inner Circle newsletter. Conrad Rocks News, which happens to be taken off a little bit right now. It's kind of fun, actually. I do this on autopilot. I look for news that would affect Christians, okay? Uh, Library of Press Union says government's lying about Ebola coverage. ISIS war was predicted 1,300 years ago. Um, anyway, so it's just stuff like that. Also, over here on the left, you'll see my free audio series. For those of you that have not subscribed to the Inner Circle newsletter, I, about once every week or two I'll send out something that's going on behind the scenes, something that, that I don't talk about on my blog. But also, you get this free seven series podcast series on YouTube and audio, Hindrances to the Truth. It's about hearing God and some of those things that actually block us from hearing God. Also, over here on the right, my prophetic book. I've had lots of uh, supernatural experiences. 
and uh, basically they pushed me away from the church. I mean, the church was not giving me answers, so I went out searching all these other religions only to come full circle to Jesus. And the Bible is a supernatural book. Uh, please check that out. We love you guys. Thank you very much for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher.